Tonight, from Hollywood, The Barbara Stanwyck Show. The title of our play tonight, High Tension, has a double meaning. It refers to a highly charged electric wire which figures prominently in the story, written by Michael Plant and Gerald Waite but it also characterizes the kind of suspense the story develops. As directed by Robert Florey, it is truly a powerful melodrama. And now in just 60 seconds, the first act of High Tension. Ain't doing it, ma'am. Ain't gonna take you to Phoenix. All right, I'll give you fifty dollars. It ain't that, ma'am. My job's worth more than that. When the boss gets back and finds you pulled out with the kid, he's gonna be madder than a snake. That's none of your business. We made a bargain. And I'm breaking it. There's a bus comes by here to Miller Grove. You can get a train on from there. But do you expect me to wait in the middle of the road? It happens to be raining. All right, yeah. There's a bus station a couple of miles back. You can wait there. How do you know I can get a bus this time of night? You'll have to chance it, ma'am. I'll take you there, and no further. Listen, I'll give you a hundred dollars. I'm sorry, ma'am. But you know the boss ain't gonna like what you're doing. Come to think of it, I don't like it either. You ought to be ashamed of yourself. Sam Hill, I could get in that jury. If they ever catch you, that is. Who would ever think a woman would do a thing like that? Women and men's all the same when it comes to money. bus through here tonight. I want to get to Phoenix. Yeah, if you can call it a bus. What time is it due? Should have been here at midnight. Guess the rain's holding him up. Buck will make it. He always has. Yeah, it'll be 75 cents for you and 25 for the kid. Change at Miller Grove. Can I fry you up a bite to eat? No, thank you. How about that, man? How about that? Forget it. You never make any time with that kind. <laughs> Even that kind's got to wear nylon. And I got some pretty jazzy stuff in my sample case. Hey, Dad, go see if you can find out her name, huh? Excuse me, ma'am. I made a mistake not getting the name. Buck likes to have a list in case of accident, you understand? Francis Ellick. What's your name, son? David. He, he's sleepy. I think I would like some coffee. Sure. What's eating you? Yeah, give me that.
Here you are, honey. Looks like it could stand a little warming. Thank you. The name's Maul Seabright, honey. Run the filling station down at the Grove. Being there ain't many strangers come here through the Grove, I uh, hope you'll excuse me, but where in creation are you from? We bought a ranch nearby. We're here for the winter. Mm-hmm. Reckon the lad would like some candy? Son? No, no, he's asleep. Got some gumdrops right here. I don't wish to be rude, but we'd rather be let alone. Toby, bringing Park Avenue to the Arizona desert. I don't want to buy anything. I was asking to. I'm giving them to you. I get a dozen pair a month. <laughs> they go where they'll do the most good. <laughs> Hops, leave the lady alone. I'm just being friendly. Come on, lady, try them. Compliments to Hobbs, Toby. Looks like the wires was down. Looks like I was running right smack into him. Gibson, you all right? In one piece, I reckon. What do we hit? That post. Lucky, too, kept us from going into the ditch. Where's the boy? I was holding him. I fell. Wow, oh, look through him. He, he ain't here. Right. Well, I was holding him. I was thrown. Lady. Lady. He Lady. isn't here. Hey. The door. Hey. Stay here. grabbed that handrail and he was electrocuted. You know what that means? Them high tension wires are still touching someplace. Could be thousands of holes. How do you tell? Look, it's metal all over. Maybe it's all hot. The whole bus. I'm getting out of here. You ain't moving. We all stay right here till we get this thing figured out. But Davy, he may be hurt. Nobody goes prowling around till we find out what's hot and what ain't. I'll take a look. Give me that lamp. Can you see him? You stay where you are. The boy. Yep, there he is, just 20 feet away. Ask me, he's lucky to be thrown out of this hot box. Well, I've got to get to him somehow. This rubber matting don't conduct the current, thank the Lord. But what else don't? How can we tell unless we touch something whether it kills? Then we start eliminating. I'll take my knife. Oh, yeah. Ooh. Them walls is pure D-death. Can't we break the rest of the glass? 
and crawl through there with maybe 10,000 boats licking around you? No, sir. And get back from that door where the metal is. Wait a minute. I bet it's up there, that wire, where we can't get at it. Now, listen. There's just two things can happen. Maybe a car will come by. This hour? And maybe the power break will be showing up down at the plant. Well, it could be them boys is on the way up here right now to fix it. That's right. So just nobody move and we'll be okay. But we've got to wait. I can't wait. Ma'am, you ain't got no choice. Then I'll find one. Hey, I clean forgot. No wonder she don't want to be rescued. Didn't like it, the boy. I was keeping it. We hit the grove. He's going to call the sheriff. He may regain consciousness any minute. Then you know what he'll do, don't you? Try and get back to us. He'll start walking over to the step and reach out for the rail. Tell him to keep away. That'll stop him. That won't stop him. Of course it won't. That boy won't pay her no mind. I could tell that back at the station. The boy's drugged. To keep him from talking, plain and simple drugged. It looks mighty like the boy. <laughs> yes, it does, doesn't it? Ma'am, we'd like to know who you are. I'll be very happy to show you my driver's license. Just tell us. Name, Mrs. Gregory Ellick. Address 75 Sutton Place, New York City. Ma'am. Occupation cocktail parties. One child, David, adopted. At least I did have a child. That's why I'm going to New York. I'm taking David back to the Adoption Society because we found out he... He was born deaf. <laughs> Watching ain't such a good idea. Like staring at sleeping folks. Uh, near always, they seem to wake right up. I hope he is hurt. Sprained ankle, anything, just so he can't walk. Listen. It's a car. I just thought of something. They're having a real bang-up shivery down the grove tonight for Georgie Delprim and his new bride. I bet that's where them kids come from. And if, if that shebang is breaking up, that means there'll be a whole heap of them coming right by here. Gibson, you know darn well Georgie Delprim ain't getting hitched till next... Oh, Mal Seabright, you never did know when to keep your big mouth shut. Thank you. Is Gibson your last name? Nope. I'm Sucker. <laughs> Most folks laugh at it. Outsiders, that is. But round the grove, Hun Sucker's as plentiful as peaches. Well, you've been very kind. If we get out of this, I'd like to send you something. Oh, ma'am. Maybe you will send me a postcard, though. I'd kind of like to know how the boy makes out to them New York doctors. I figure you was going there to get his ears fixed. No, uh... No, we tried that. Well, there's places to teach him to talk and all that, ain't there? Well, the Adoption Society will take care of that. After all, it isn't my responsibility anymore. 
I'm sure when Davy learns to speak, someone will take him. After all, he's a very sweet child. As a matter of fact, I'm going to miss him terribly. Then why take him back? Well, there just isn't any other way out. Uh, perhaps it was a mistake in adopting a baby in the first place, but Greg, my husband, was so anxious to have a child. And at first, it, it did make a difference. But then we found out he... Well, it, it, it wasn't that uh, Greg didn't love him. It's just that it, he's such a perfectionist. He can't stand to have the slightest flaw in anything. And after that, uh, oh, everything seemed to go wrong between us. And, well, even so, when Greg suggested he be sent back, I... Well, you can imagine how I felt. It was a terrible decision. It wasn't easy. And it wasn't true. I couldn't help hearing, and I don't believe one lying word of it. It is true, it is. Then how come you're sneaking off in the middle of the night in this stinking bus? Your husband wanted to get rid of the kid. Why ain't he driving you to Phoenix? Well, my, my, my husband is ill. And them duds, it looks like he could afford to send you in a big limousine. If he knew what you was at, that is. That's none of your business. She's just like Mrs. Cattery runs the drugstore down at the Grove. She can't keep her man, neither. And always blaming the weather and the customers and everything. Feeding on excuses. Blaming everything but the truth that she's a selfish woman. She just ain't got enough love inside her to hold her man. You, you come clawing at me and I'll belch across the mouth. Women like you make me sick. Turning in a kid like you bought an automobile and then found out it had a bum clutch. Stop it! Maybe you're doing the kid a favor. You don't have enough love to be a wife and mother. You're so selfish, it sticks out of you like granite. Stop it! Listen, I can't have any kids neither. And I ain't tried adopting any, you know why? Because of what someone said to me once. She said, Maul, I got six boys and I know. There ain't many women around that can be mothers without first risking their lives, without suffering childbirth. Oh, Ma, now cut it out. I've been wondering about that a long time. But now that I've seen you and what you're doing to that poor kid, I... I know she was telling the truth. I've had a belly for this. I'm getting out. Fried. Fried. Who cares? Oh, shut up! Sit down! the bus away from him. Careful how you touch that gear shift. Or anything. Standing up, hurry! Can you see him? Oh, God. Boy! He can't hear you. Maybe if we all signal. He won't understand, he's so little. Well, he sees us. He's walking. Don't you try and move. What do we do? He'll die. Up above the roof here a long way. Must be the wire. See? He's smiling. He's with it. Uh -huh. The wire is sparking where it touches the bus. What's happening? <laughs> 
Why don't you use something and try and knock it off the wire up there? Well, I got my cane. Oh, hurry. Come on, use this. Well, there's only one way to find out. Rubber tip. Oh, hurry up. The boy's going to come in. Something up there. Must be another wire. Oh, David, don't move. Please, please don't move. That's it. I touched it. right. It wasn't my husband. It was I who couldn't stand a defective child. So you see, there's not much of a life to risk. Daddy will be here soon. And we'll take you home. And there'll be a nice big log fire burning. And we'll get you out of those wet clothes. I was right about one thing, though. About a woman needing to suffer to have a child. I reckon you was, Marl. Because that boy was born tonight. Oh. Next week, we bring you a most unusual story, Sign of the Zodiac, which gives me the dramatic role of a woman obsessed by guilt. Dan Duryea and John Blondell are cast as the guest stars in the most mysterious chain of cause and effect. I hope that you will tune in to see them and that you enjoyed tonight's show. It has been brought to you by the Alberto Culver Company, makers of Rinse Away for clean hair and scalp, and the new crystal clear VO5 holding hairspray. <laughs>